scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Those who just seek God for things, the entire scope of their Christian pursuit is just for things. What to eat, what to wear. For such people, Jesus took out time in Matthew chapter 6 to talk to them and challenge them about an excessive obsession for things alongside the worry that that kind of template of pursuit brings. That if your Christian experience is built on just wanting things, the side effect is that you can never be separated from a life of worry. Are we learning now? So that worry is a consequence is the side effect of being excessively concerned about what to eat what to wear and so on and so forth and he leaves them with an assurance in chapter 6 of matthew that even the birds of the air they do not sow they do not reap that means they violate a fundamental principle yet in the father's benevolence he still made space for their welfare are we together now then we have on the other hand the second group of people who say I love the Lord and that is the basis of my pursuit and that is scriptural except that sometimes they go overboard and they close their hands to every reward system and every advantage that comes with our loving God did you understand what I just shared now so that we have two groups of people those who are not interested in God they do not love him they are principally motivated by that which they receive for seeking him the bible cautions such a motivation it should not be the principal motivation of the believer but then on the other hand the bible also cautions people who refuse to receive simply because they are attempting to show their love for jesus christ and they want to him to know how selfless they are and then they go overboard and they do not know that the name father the bible speaking jesus himself was teaching and he taught us that the hallmark of fatherhood is not having children the hallmark of fatherhood is the ability to give you are not a father just because you have a child you are a father to the degree to which you are always in a hurry to give he said if you've been evil know how to give good gifts is that true how much more shall your heavenly father give so a true father gives refusing to embrace and receive that which god gives is fighting his fatherhood it's important that we understand this we are never called to reject the givings of god we are never called to frown at the possibility of god rewarding us we are only called to prioritize our loving him more than receiving from him i need to put this as a very strong foundation so that when your christian experience is entirely motivated by receiving 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 from god you are not wrong but you are not complete if your christian experience is motivated by loving jesus loving jesus and when his blessings comes to you you push it away the hymn writer says praise god from whom all blessings flow paul was mentoring the church in ephesus 
and he says thanks be to the father of our lord jesus christ and he began to speak about the fact that he has given us all spiritual blessings and that they reside in heavenly places in christ so the first point i want to establish tonight is the fact that god is a rewarder god is a giver his very character is built on benevolence he says for god so loved the world not that he asked not that he demanded he gave it is all right to factor it in your christian experience that as i live for god and as i serve him there must be room in my understanding to receive the blessings of god as he comes to me he's called the rewarder one more time say god rewards he is a rewarder are we together what does it mean to reward to reward means to give something to someone in recognition of a service rendered an effort a contribution or an achievement reward has to do with giving something a token of gratitude a token of encouragement are we together now in appreciation for a service that has been rendered your effort your contribution or your achievement that immediately please look up that immediately suggests to you that god built the system of the kingdom please listen carefully not everything in the kingdom is a gift because a reward is tied to service a reward is tied to contribution a reward is tied to effort and a reward is tied to achievement the difference between a reward and mere giving is that a gift is not predicated on anything necessarily a gift entirely depends on the sense of benevolence of the giver are we together whereas a reward depends on service rendered depends on that means i can be the most benevolent person available but never reward you because you have not done anything that warrants being rewarded i can give you a gift but not a reward are we together now you have to understand that god is both a giver and a rewarder there are many people who will receive gifts from god but never be rewarded they will receive gifts as an expression that is a loving god i give you an instance he sends the rain on both the good and the bad that is a gift it's not a reward the ability to breathe the psalmist said i lay me down and i slept and i wait for the lord sustain me are we together now the ability to breathe and all of these things they are gifts but there are specific things that believers can do that will compel the lord to isolate you and to bless you so lavishly the difference will be clear even among those who are in the faith fold that this one is not just a gift it is a reward may that be your testimony in the name of jesus so we have distinguished the fact the difference between a mere giving and a reward that reward is tied to service is tied to contribution are we together it's tied to your supporting a cause very intentionally whereas a gift entirely depends on the benevolence of the giver it is possible to give to people who are even undeserving but you never reward somebody undeserving are we together now you can meet someone by the roadside and give the person say 10 naira 20 naira and say young man go and buy something but you cannot give the person salary every month because the difference the similarity is that both of them mandate releasing something but one is tied to effort service that has been vetted scrutinized and approved are we together now because there is a theology around the body of christ that makes it look like because god loves everybody everybody should be in the same state spiritually financially and otherwise you will be learning from this teaching that there are many people who are christians but will never have the opportunity to touch certain level of spiritual sociological financial realities why 
because some things in the kingdom are not gifts they are rewards if you are with me say amen, amen. it therefore means that you can have two believers perhaps saved in the same church perhaps mentored by the same pastor and yet the possibilities that they command as far as their christian experience is concerned can be east and west now you know that the difference is not just the love of god for them are we together the bible says in matthew 25 we'll be going there shortly i just need to drum this basis for us to understand so that this discussion will profit us maximally so that many of us don't get beguiled with the fact that reward entails giving but that giving is for one who is deserving the bible says in matthew 25 the parable of the talents that the owner of the talent came and met three people are we together then the bible says he gave on to one five talents is that in your bible he gave on to another two talents he gave on to one one talent what was common between all three is that he gave so there was giving but the distinguishing factor was a very silent statement that was written there it says according to their several abilities and you would see at the end of that parable that he was right in allocating it because their level of stewardship justified what he did in the first place are we together let's establish a few things very quickly and then we'll pray so our walk with god is primarily motivated by our love for him our walk with god the believer's experience must be motivated by his love for him but second to be motivated by your love for jesus you are motivated by the fact that there is a reward system that was built in this kingdom you have to understand this that understanding that there is a reward system built in our work with God motivates you it gives you the energy to survive unbearable things are we together nobody remains indefinitely without some incentive that motivates him now what I am teaching you is not only true for God it is also true for men so this is both a human and a divine principle the principle of motivation through reward is not only a divine principle it is also a human principle meaning everything you are learning here is not only spiritual in context alone it can be applicable to every aspect of your life human beings should be motivated primarily by their love for God and their love for men but when that is in place there must be the consciousness of a reward system say amen. amen a woman who is pregnant for instance the day she, they are, she's told that she's with child she already knows that nine months will not be rosy but there is a motivation are we together your bible says that who for the joy that was set before him is that in your bible the bible says he endured the cross and he despised the shame so even jesus who is the epitome of love did not hide the fact that he was motivated by something are we blessed now don't tell me to just serve god only because i love him that is a very sincere but destructive theology the kingdom is built around a reward system it is only when my desire to be rewarded or my desire to receive from him now outweighs my desire to love him there is a problem there but when my love for him is in place it is not unscriptural to be open for the reward some of you by reason of this teaching and the prayer you will find out that there are many blessings you have rejected probably through ignorance in a bit to show that you love God you have rejected a lot of things that have been scheduled by God to come into your life I'm glad to announce to you that the the rewarder is also a restorer in the name of Jesus Christ everything that was lost shall be returned unto you 
everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto Hallelujah. you let's walk to a, a few scriptures to establish the scriptural basis for being opened for a reward first samuel chapter 17 we are people of scripture, so let's walk through a few scriptures. 1 Samuel 17 from verse 24. This was the occasion of David and Goliath. The young teenager called David at the time was sent by his father to go and feed his brothers who were at the war front. And the Bible says that when David got there, he heard a beast of a man called Goliath roaring. Watch this now, we are reading to 27. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, the Bible says they fled from him and they were so afraid. 25. And when the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel, he is come up. And it shall be that the man who killed him, the king will enrich him with great riches and give him his daughter and make his father's house free of tax in Israel. Say reward. Verse 27. Okay, now let's go to 26. 26, please. And David said to the man, What shall be done to the man that killed the Philistines? In other words, I'm not going to waste my energy for nothing. As much as I'm an Israelite, what, what will sponsor the stamina? It takes a lot to stand before Goliath. If it was easy, everybody would stand there. So what shall be done to the man that kills this? And for this uncircumcised Philistine, the man who will go through the rigor of being courageous, being skillful to endure and bring this man down. 27. And the people answered him after the manner, saying, so shall it be done to the man that killed him. So there are things that are done for people who do certain things. That is not done for everyone. Are we together now? Story number two. I'm hurrying up because of time. My apologies. In Matthew chapter 19. Please give us from verse 27. Matthew chapter 19 from verse 27. We're reading to 30. This is Peter and the disciples now. They had walked with Jesus for a while. Remember that when Jesus called them to follow him, they didn't follow him just because they loved him. They saw a celebrity, an invincible man who was shaking the town at that time. And so they left their fishing and came to him, believing he would give them a better sense of living. And as the days went by, they didn't see him say anything about reward. And they did not hide their feelings. It started as a rumor. Mothers came and were liasing for their children. Eventually, Peter our Peter again Peter broke the ice now let's see what Peter said and Peter said unto him behold we have forsaken all and followed you what shall we have therefore 28 Jesus said now this is Jesus replying he didn't say you are carnal unspiritual you are not even grateful for the privilege of following me he knew that the kingdom was built on a reward system. And he said, I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, that means not everybody agreed to follow, but since you took the risk to follow me, not everybody will take the risk to be responsible. Not everybody will take the risk to walk in integrity. There has to be a difference. He said, in the regeneration when the son of man matthew's synoptic account now shall sit in the throne of his glory he says you shall also sit upon 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of israel let's stop there he gave them a motivation and that was the end of the discussion they said all right now at least we know that we can we're not working for nothing do you know the ridicule they would have received for leaving what they were doing to follow this man who did not seem like he was taking them anywhere there was a time Jesus went up to pray and the disciples took it upon themselves to test the power of God and to pray for an epileptic patient you see the embarrassment they endured. 
how could Jesus not motivate them by telling them all of this is leading somewhere story number three Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 this is Jesus himself Philippians 2 and verse 5 let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus 6 now it says who been in the form of God hallelujah hallelujah okay who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God let's read on seven it says but made himself of no reputation look what Jesus had to go through taking the form of a born servant am I doing something wrong probably the feed the feedbacks in front hallelujah and coming in the likeness of men verse 8 it says and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross here is the reward ready therefore God this is for Jesus now God didn't say well done you are loved so find somewhere in heaven and relax therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name verse 10 that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow those in heaven those in the earth and those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of the Father say God is a rewarder let me give you the last example ready for that second timothy please chapter 4 from verse 7 and 8 why am i taking out time to share scripture because it is important that your faith be founded upon the integrity of god's word and not just the opinion of a man that when you are trusting god to reward you it's not just because joshua selman said it is that i have found from scripture that god rewards the last verse i have fought a good fight my goodness i have finished the race i have kept the faith you thought paul mentoring his son in the gospel timothy would just stop there paul did not stop there he said finally there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge will give to me on that day good information and not to me only but also to all who have loved his appearing this is in your bible very powerful scripture so we know for a fact that in as much as our ultimate motivation in working with god is our love for him we must find it scriptural to believe and expect that he rewards us whilst we serve him why does God reward men and why do men reward men why is a reward system important in our dealings with God and also in our dealings with men Paul gave us the answer in 2 Timothy the, the scripture we just read because life is a fight life is a race life and destiny is a trust nobody gets into the boxing ring to fight for nothing in fact many times before they fight the price is already there and all of them have seen it both the loser and the winner sees the price are we together now life and destiny verse 7 now is a fight that the moment you find yourself on this side of god's kingdom you are going to fight against principalities and powers is a fight to remain for jesus in a depraved generation is a fight to remain in integrity in the midst of opportunities for compromise and then he says life is a race probably many of us here have been involved in all kinds of marathon races and you do not see someone running for three hours and smiling and rejoicing and singing there is dedicated concentration sometimes they breathe as though they will lose their breath and die that is the price it takes to run and to finish then the bible says life is a trust 
there are things God gives you there are many people at the end of their life they gain a lot of things and lose what God gave them for instance your soul he said what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul so God rewards men because he himself as a righteous judge the righteous king acknowledges the fact that life is a fight life is a race and life is a trust now God designed men to walk by motivation are we together there are many believers today who can stand and die for Jesus like I said earlier on first before because they love him but because they also know that there is an assurance that they will be with him he said to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord that is a motivation now the difference between Joseph and Nimrod Nimrod the son of Cush is that one put a motivation in front whereas the other one put only a dream in front Nimrod said come let us build let us build a tower whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves he shared the honor among them so everyone who would put the brick and mortar knew that I have a stake in this but Joseph said I have a dream brothers in that dream I saw you people bowing down to me it was all about him and the brother said you will now know that even though you are our brother we cannot support you indefinitely without a stake listen this is not only a spiritual discussion this is an organizational principle that nobody will be part of your program and your project indefinitely until they can find a space to be relevant and to be rewarded in what you are doing hallelujah we lie to people all across the body of Christ madam follow your husband just because you love him first just at first that cannot be the only reason there has to be a motivation that both of you are going somewhere to achieve something to raise children that will honor the name of the Lord that is a motivation young man as you go to school read don't tell him to read just because he loves the Lord let him know the difference between a great destiny and a destiny of mediocrity and failure when you create that template he will wake up in the night to read motivated by that reward system hallelujah watch this in the military there are younger military men who work and aspire number one to help the nation their primary assignment they are motivated first by their love for the nation but they also desire to rise to the highest levels and their motivation is with what is done with generals they see a general whether serving or retired there are benefits and blessings and the young man is encouraged to still stand in the war field and to remain a person of integrity because promotion is a possibility hallelujah even in ministry with the young ones who God is helping we do it because we love Jesus but we also do it because we have seen what he has done with those who went ahead of us he did not leave them in shame so we know that no matter the embarrassment that comes with bearing the cross we love Jesus but we also know that there is nobility at the end of this is someone learning already now for the sake of our discussion I want to show us three things that God rewards because God does not reward everything everything has a consequence every seed has a harvest but God does not reward everything there are many others in the Bible but I was able to put together three things that God rewards what does God reward number one are you ready God rewards diligent pursuit for him and the things of the spirit the first thing that God rewards is a diligent pursuit for him and a diligent pursuit for the things of the spirit 
Hebrews 11 and verse 6 already tells us that he that cometh to God must come believing that God exists and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Please say after me, them that diligently seek him. That means when you see a man seeking the Lord, loving the Lord, seeking him in worship, seeking him in prayer, seeking him in fasting, seeking him in the study of the word, seeking him by working with the company of wise people who love Jesus, the Bible tells you that man's life will not be an ordinary life. Are we together? Let me tell you the truth. God loves everybody, but our destinies are not the same. Our destinies are a measure of the rewards that has come into some by reason of their passion and their love for God. A man will not pray two, three hours every day, study the Bible, walk in true holiness and righteousness, and then receive the same reward with someone who is licentious and careless and say, it does not matter, it is my life. Don't forget that his throne is built upon righteousness and justice. A student who reads one hour to the exam and a student who is always there in diligent pursuit, even with his knowledge, he will meet people to teach him. Their results will not be the same. Are we together? Even among herbalists and native doctors, their results are not the same based on the degree to which they press into the demonic. There are others, they say, this is a powerful herbalist. Why do they call him powerful? Because of the depth of his consecration and his pursuit. We have to be very honest with ourselves to know that seeking God genuinely above money, above titles, above church, above religion, there is a reward to it. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my only Lord. I'm seeking you as a precious joy. Not to give up, I'll be here for you. You are my only Lord. When I began my walk with God, there was no comeliness and nothing to be desired. It was a blind and sincere pursuit. Lord, I love you and I thank you for motivating me and helping me know that if I seek you, you can build a great destiny out of my life. And I brought my life like the content of the alabaster box and poured it before him. Look what he's done today. No one should tell you that God does not reward. The first thing God rewards is the, the sincerity of your pursuit. Hallelujah. So that anybody who tells you this church thing, this Jesus thing, does not matter. I just need to settle down and know who is who. By reason of what you are learning in this conference, you can call him and say, listen, let me tell you, in this kingdom, when men give God their everything, when they pour out their lives as drink offerings, to love him, to seek him. And it's important that God rewards our pursuit for him. In the presence of those who know us so that they are motivated I used to know this young man while he used to clean a house near my house you would see him listening to a message while he's mopping as a houseboy to know that today he's a CEO to know that he's the great man of God today you know I meet several people as I travel around the world and some of them used to know me before and most of them will say we knew it I said it's not about me it's about the message that God rewards are we together for someone right now you are in your season of work with God you are pressing into the things of God while others are sleeping you are awake praying while others are roaming around wasting their lives you are there giving yourself to God can I tell you your reward is sure don't be discouraged it may take a while only a foolish farmer plants corn today 
and by morning is complaining no you give it time motivated by the fact that god swore upon the earth that seed time and harvest please listen listen carefully hallelujah the first thing god rewards is diligent pursuit diligent pursuit matthew chapter 7 7 and 8 jesus was teaching and he said ask and you shall receive he says seek and you shall find i like this one seek seek trouble you will find it seek peace you will find it seek a mediocre life invest into a life of mediocrity you will find it invest into a life of dignity and honor you will find it it says knock when you read the amplified expression it says ask and keep asking seek and keep seeking knock and keep knocking the law is in the next verse for everyone that asketh receiveth everyone who seeks finds ah. as the deer panted for the waters of my soul longed after you for you When the rewarder comes to four square he's not coming to reward members he's coming to reward those who seek him don't say i've been here for a long time uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. rewarding those who love him and would serve him lord my life belongs to you everything belongs to you you are the object of my obsession number two what does God reward? Is someone learning already? God rewards faithfulness. God rewards faithfulness. Anyone who is waiting to enjoy the ministry of the rewarder must be one who is faithful. God rewards faithfulness. In Matthew chapter 25, from verse 14 to 30 we are not reading everything for sake of time this is the parable of the talents the bible says he gave unto one five talents he gave unto one two talents he gave unto one one talent and the bible says then he went on a long journey are we together immediately the person with five said i need to get to work and he went to work immediately and made five more the person with two didn't sit down envying the one with five all of them had peculiar challenges that were were associated with their realm the one with five talent had the challenge of complacency to overcome he would have said after all i have the highest talent here but it took a greater focus and concentration for him to go and multiply to five the one with two would have suffered jealousy and envy and say why is it not me he had to shelve jealousy and envy to focus then the person with one you see what the guy did you now see that the one that was given to him was even messy because he was a careless and nonchalant person very clearly when the master came back he called all of them and now he began to ask them the person with five said you gave me five and I've given you another five. Let's see what um, 21 says. Watch this. The Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. He didn't stop there. You were faithful over a few things. He said, I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Well done, good and faithful servant he said the same thing to the one with two talents then the one with one talent came 
very arrogant like many believers he said i know you are a hard man you like reaping where you did not sow so i even did you a favor by not wasting it away i buried it now here is your talent and jesus said you wicked new king james says lazy king james says unprofitable servant that means you did not bring profit to me you are a wicked and unprofitable servant he said if you know that i gather where i did not reap why didn't you go and give serious people like the bankers so that they would do something with it that means what did the rest do that you did not see hallelujah are we together the second thing god rewards is faithfulness there are many people admiring estates and mansions and yet the one room you are staying in is not is it does not look like you are grateful to god for giving you that if your one room are we together now you keep is is dirty it's unkept and you say in the name of jesus i know i'll be an estate owner god is love but he's not a fool you prepare for where you are going by being faithful where you are please hear me you prepare for where you are going by being faithful where you are i know god will give me an anointing to raise the dead someday i will speak to nations someday no speak to the two people before you with sincerity and faithfulness pastor the 10 people but nobody will see me to reward me no problem there is an all-seeing eye of this one who calls himself a rewarder even Anna the prophetess who hid in the temple and nobody saw her Jesus made sure in his intelligence that reference was made to her also you never count those who played a role in Jesus' life and ignore that woman please hear me many people are unfaithful you may not be a sinner but unfaithfulness aborts your potential are we together now to experience greater things and greater rewards today by the privilege of God's grace many people see what God is doing through our lives and you know very interesting how many people think we're just lucky and I tell them lucky go and find out the story for many years I played the keyboard for someone who used to have a prison ministry they, they used to preach for they they were part of the people who went to preach when obasa joe was in prison it was my own small keyboard i carried it by myself and i trekked to a small hotel where they were using never did anybody ever tell me thank you you may have heard it in my teachings the only thing i ever got was one bottle of fanta and one cassette and yet I did it sincerely because I love the Lord. Nobody comes out of nowhere. It's a joke. Take, throw away all that, that superstitious belief. When you, just because you saw David in front of Goliath for the first time, does not mean that was his first time of fighting. I'm saying this because in this season, God is coming to this church and there are people whose lives will change overnight. Don't be surprised. Don't say they just came out of nowhere. Find out their participation. Faithfulness in prayer meetings. Faithfulness in Bible study. Even when it's not convenient. And God is saying, I'm watching you. Ah, God sees all. God sees One day you will see someone who is a cleaner just cleaning the chairs. The day is time for God to lift you. Someone will come here and say, young man, what are you doing? You are a young man and you are cleaning the church. Yes, sir. What did you study? I studied ABC. Call this number tomorrow. And in two weeks you will hear that he's working in a top oil and gas firm. And people say he was lucky. <clears throat> Listen, when it was time for Isaac to get a wife, when it was time for Isaac to get a wife, the Abraham sent a servant and when he came, he said, Lord, I am praying 
many young ladies come to fetch water here but i am praying that i will meet the person i meet who is faithful doing the routine of faithfulness as a woman let it be that that is abraham's wife as soon as he got there he met rebecca at the point of faithfulness there are many things you lose through unfaithfulness let me tell you the truth you can be free from sin but if you are not faithful there are many things you will still lose as though you are a sinner there are many people today who have qualified for promotion but cannot be promoted because the executives know that by longevity you are here but sincerely is going to be a a minus to that organization to promote you please say after me in the name of jesus i obtain grace to be faithful apostle my own work is just to clean the pulpit do it sincerely as unto the lord knowing that you are serving the lord christ and knowing that your reward is sure my own is to scrub toilets while i'm scrubbing it people will come and be saying all kinds of things don't worry service and faithfulness in service is a deep mystery for rising to untold realms in the spirit run away from people who become great and don't have a track record of service they are dangerous Elisha, a man who carried the double portion of Elijah's anointing. The Bible said he was the one who poured water upon the hands of Elijah. Are we learning? Today, there are many, many families that are willing their inheritance, not to the biological children, but to someone else who is not even connected to them, but has been faithful serving. Faithful serving. Hallelujah. I had the opportunity to pray one time, quite some time ago, for someone to pray on their will. And he gave me an opportunity to read it before he would seal it. And I saw a sizable portion that he willed to someone, knowing he had only three children. I said, why did you do this? And he said, this young boy you see, he will take a bullet for me. That if today I'm not, I'm, I trust this boy, more than I trust my own children. The hymn writer says, may the Lord depend on you. May you be so faithful that God can depend on you. No, I, I know that this man is here. He will be faithful. The first thing God rewards is a passionate pursuit, a diligent pursuit for God. The second thing God rewards, and let me tell you the truth, everything that god rewards men also reward in fact the way god rewards is by using men so what is applicable as far as your relationship with god is concerned is also applicable within your work as far as man to man is concerned faithfulness is someone learning in galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 still speaking about faithfulness galatians 6 and verse 9 the bible encourages us to not be weary in well doing do not be weary while doing good new king james will say it says for in due season we shall reap if we faint not or new king james says if we do not lose heart he encourages you to not be weary in well doing that means there are times that well doing does not look rewarding for the short time you can keep doing a lot of things and it looks like people are demeaning you downplaying you maybe this is a word for someone you are saying i'm about to compromise i'm tired i've been a nice person and i've been cheated i would have had two houses today if i just quietly collected the bribe i didn't and god looked at me as if he didn't see me the next time that money comes around the table god it will not be my fault i won't let it pass listen let me tell you the truth it pays to be faithful the rewards of faithfulness does not come every day but the day it comes is areas is accumulated together first corinthians chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2 first corinthians chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2 i'll tie up one more point and then we'll pray let a man so consider us 
as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God, Paul says. Next verse. Moreover, he says, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful. The hymn writer again says, I'll do as it beats me, whatever the cost. I'll be a true soldier. I'll die at my most. When a soldier dies in active service, they give them the gun salutes, even to their corpse, because they were faithful to the end. They kept their vow. faithfulness number three what does God reward God rewards are you ready for this God rewards the works of men there are two dimensions to this God rewards the purity of the motivation and God rewards the degree to which you comply to the pattern given to you please pay attention the third thing that God rewards is the works of men God rewards the works of men he rewards the purity of the motivation and he rewards your degree of compliance to divine patterns Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. The book of Revelation starts in a very interesting way. John is caught up in the Isle of Patmos. He was banished on account of his faith. Bible history tells us. And in the Isle of Patmos, he is given access to the third heavens. Then he begins to document his revelations. Captured as the things that were, the things that are, the things that would happen thereafter. When we get to 22 and verse 12, please give it to us. 22 and verse 12. 22. It says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone, not according to my law for them, according to his work. Behold! have this at the back of your mind that I am coming quickly and my reward is with me not without my word and that I am here to give to everyone according to his work let me tell you sincerely the works of men will be rewarded there are two dimensions to your work that will be rewarded number one the purity of your motivation that means as God looks at me now from heaven he's not just carried away that I'm preaching here the first thing is he has to vet the purity uh, what is motivating you are you preaching just because you love God's people and you want to see the name of the Lord lifted I can come here and preach just because I want fame preach just because I'm trying to make a name for myself the motivation behind the works of men will be tried and number two the degree to which you walk in keeping with God's pattern that means if your assignment was to stand here and you as much as came up here but you stood here it will be rewarded the margin between God's will and where you stood will be rewarded there are many many people who will miss the reward when the works are tried God will say I called you to be a man of God and simply because of the persecution you manipulated your way out and you are something else it will be rewarded first Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 12 this will probably be our final scripture for tonight I want you to pay attention to this point three things I teach you tonight that God rewards number one God rewards passionate pursuit for him and for spiritual things number two God rewards faithfulness at all levels and number three God rewards the works of men please give it to us first Corinthians 
3 I begin my reading from verse 12 now if anyone builds on this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay straw uh-huh we're reading to 15 each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is 14 if anyone's work which he has built on it endures he will receive what he will not just receive a reward because he built we have to look at what you built on if you built on jealousy and pride and just the desire to be famous the desire to outshine and pull others the bible says your work will be tried that means there are many things we are doing today and while they are clapping for us when that fire of god's justice blows what will be left will not be a handful as men of god our many preaching apostle joshua selman while you are clapping is only god that knows what is motivating it it can be a carnal mundane pursuit just to make a name and when it is tried you will find out that of the 2000 preaching only five were preached from a pure heart that is the reward you will get let's finish that scripture please if anyone's work is burned he will suffer loss but he himself will be saved at yes through fire so it's not about being a good or bad person the purity of your work while you were walking in church father it is an honor for me to clean this place for the man of god to come and bless his people it's a privilege to be part of your house and god is seeing it someone else can come and walk and you say he's the most hard-working person that is true based on your perspective but it's only god that knows how many times he insulted the pastor before he said yes sir when he came it's been recorded in heaven yes sir Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done, all my treasures will be nothing. Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Let me tell you the truth. I made up my mind as a man of God knowing this whether it is to talk to one person or a stadium of people little children or wealthy billionaires my passion does not vacillate it remains the same because I am serving the Lord Christ and as far as I live I will give him my best if in the process of serving him our life ends while serving him still gain but as long as he's granted us breath that will serve him with everything we've had believers please hear me as I prepare to round up it is safe to know that God is a rewarder but for someone the way you are living your life now there is no reward for you for sure because God cannot count on you there is nothing about your life today listen I learned this in my work with God before God marks you, he must find out how your money, your influence, your knowledge, your beauty, anything that does not contribute to the revelation of Jesus, to bring him glory, to draw souls to him, to transform lives and nations from God's perspective is a total waste. Don't tell me you are beautiful. Show me how your beauty becomes a tool to reveal Jesus don't tell me you have money show me how your money like Joseph of Arimathea can buy Jesus a grave site so that we'll say oh grave where is your sting don't tell me you are a man of influence show me how your influence contributed in a church getting land contributed in securing a stadium for the gospel to be preached and to better the lives of people nothing in itself is valuable except and unless it is connected to God's program this is a very powerful message tonight you can know you are living a, a life that deserves to be rewarded 
when you spend your life seeing that everything about your life God gives you 10 naira and you say listen 10 naira may not be able to buy fuel for the generator but I can buy two rags to help the sanctuary keepers God is seeing that motivated by your love now he rewards you by opening a greater door It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you, oh you. Listen, let me tell you how powerful a king once upon a time it was a king's birthday and a prophet was in prison a woman wanted the head of that prophet but she did not have the power to fight and a young girl came before the king and impressed him by dancing in a way she responded to his will and desire when kings are happy clear the way for them they can do anything what demons and principalities and powers could not do, what strong men and scribes could not do, a little girl's dance before the king was what removed the head of a prophet. Don't tell me you are small. Serve the king and see what the king can use you to do. Don't say I don't have the money to give. Pray for your pastor in the place of intercession every day and say Lord that is my little contribution it's like dancing before the king when kings are happy they will say what do you want the king said even to half of my kingdom and she went to a wicked woman to advise her and the woman said thank you for clearing the way the message is that it is service that opened that door can I tell you the truth there are many people today as I round up. I hope I didn't waste your time. There are many people today that no matter how stubborn their children are, they will always find favor and find help. Do you know why? Because some of their parents, when they were young, they had a little boy's quarters and they kept missionaries there. They didn't have the power to preach in crusades. But every time they hear that a missionary is coming to town, it is their cooler that they'll put food for the missionary. And one day the man said, before I leave, I stand upon this place. Madam, your children's children, a man of God will also come out of that person. Listen, that may have happened in 1971. Now by 2000, you have a stubborn child who will not listen to you or anybody. He does not know that the rewarder is determined to keep his vow. One day, what you could not do, what your husband could not do, that covenant of serving the purposes of God, that young man will enter inside one crusade, maybe drunk, maybe angry, and fire falls upon him. And that boy will become a man of God. There are missionaries today who have died but their words upon your life is still speaking. Let me tell you something. If you are here and you have spent your life serving God and living for God, and it looks like all you have seen around your life is reproach, maybe from children, maybe you are not doing well, and others are even laughing at you and saying this, your Christianity has not spoken. Hear me, the rewarder is on his way. Yes, sir. Mama, what you, what you suffered for to make sure your children went to mission schools. You didn't wear a nice dress to give them an opportunity. I tell you, both with God and man, your reward is coming. A very simple statement that the man of God made that blessed me so much congratulations by the way on your 20th anniversary congratulations hallelujah did you hear what he said many of you did not pay attention to what was said that whilst this 
this branch was started they were doing the plaster and at the same time painting that is a level of passion that is unusual and God was watching and he said 20 years later you will still be standing please hear me there was a man in the Bible called Abraham God mandated and instructed that Abraham would take his only child and go to a mount that he would show him and offer as a burnt offering the Bible says Abraham arose early it was not convenient he got up the, do you know what it means to drag the child after waiting for over 25 years I wonder what he was going to tell Sarah at his return that would have been the end of his marriage but he was still willing to risk it and he took Isaac cut the long story short when he showed God he could give everything God now swore a blessing he said Abraham I swear by myself that in blessing I will bless you please hear me do not claim Abraham's blessings until you claim his passion if you are the children of Abraham he said you will do the works of Abraham. There are people who are untouchable, not because they are anything in themselves. They are so useful in the program of God. God's jealousy defends them like a shadow. Are we together? Yes. That when you sit down and you are planning evil in the secret, before the plan is executed, the rewarder himself says, no, this is a reed I have taken out of fire. Don't come to this family every missionary has eaten because these people are alive how dare you come to take them in the name of cancer how dare you come to take them in the name of any sickness please hear me in this end time those who are going to survive are those who will plunge themselves into the program of god not everything you will receive in your christian experience is a gift do not forget this teaching a gift depends on the benevolence of the giver irrespective of the attitude of the receiver but a reward depends on the contribution of the receiver to satisfying the giver whatever you want to do Lord you can do through me whatever you want to say Lord you can say through me whoever you want to bless Lord you can bless through me whatever you want to start Lord you can start That you are in politics and you are in governance and you are like Daniel saying Lord for as long as I am here I will look for what pleases you and plunge myself into it and God says you have vowed to do this for me let me see who will stand against you oh I am a man of God I have vowed that I will be a preacher of righteousness leading many to Jesus doing ministry with unbending integrity regardless the consequence and God says you have made this decision you will be sitting down and God will wake someone and say, give him a car. That house that you are, I told you to give someone. There are many people who will receive the prayer requests of many as gifts and as rewards because they have plunged themselves into the program of God. First square, my message for you, and this extends also to the body of Christ. Please listen carefully. Your Christian experience is not profitable until it becomes an active contributor towards revealing Jesus and bringing joy and glory to the Father. Don't tell me about your achievements, I'm not interested. Only tell me how they add up to contributing to the program of God. This is where the real value of the believer comes. Your value and your usefulness in the kingdom is not in acquisition. Your desire to be a billionaire only becomes profitable from a kingdom standpoint if you can connect it to kingdom come. Your marriage becomes profitable, not just because you have children, but that you have used your womb
to raise the next prophet, to raise the next apostle, to raise the next visionary leader over a territory. Now God calls your marriage and say, this was marriage indeed. There are many people who pride in being rich, respectfully speaking, pride in being influential, and heaven is just watching them and say, as far as you are concerned, your register has not been opened because we have not seen anything that has contributed. Listen, let me speak to the younger people here, the youth here. Make sure your life counts in this church and to the program of God. At the end of your life, you may have heard me say, you will be remembered for two things. The trouble you created, the pain you put for people, or the solutions and the contributions that you made. Paul at the end of his life said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. It is my prayer here at this conference, this 20th anniversary, the first of your, your, um, your provincial, your convocation, your conference here. Um, it is my prayer that this tonight, alongside everything you are going to be hearing in worship, in teaching, that it will add to your understanding. God is a giver, and when it has to give it, he gives everyone. Because the same Lord is rich unto all. But God as a rewarder does not reward everybody. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are gifts and there are rewards. He that cometh unto God must come believing that he exists. And that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Please rise up on your feet. Just two prayer points, thank you for your time. Two prayer points and we're done for tonight. May I please request that you join me as we pray. Prayer point number one, Lord, I am available and I'm usable to bring you glory through my life and through my lifetime. Go ahead and pray. I am available and I am usable. The Bible says, but in a great house, there are many kinds of vessels, vessels of gold, vessels of silver, vessels of wood and of clay the bible says some vessels are unto dishonor while some are unto honor if a man will punch himself that man will be a vessel unto honor meat for the master's use someone is praying lord in your end time program spiritually governmentally economically i declare that i am available and usable Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The last prayer point, and I want you to please pay attention. There was a man in the book of Esther called Mordecai. Mordecai sat at the gate. That was his place of function. Listen carefully. One time Mordecai, by reason of his effective service, he heard two people who were conspiring to kill King Ahasuerus. Are we together now? And Mordecai took up that issue, reported it to the authorities, and the people were brought to justice. It was written, but Mordecai was not rewarded. I'm establishing the next prayer point now. The man who saved the life of the king was not rewarded. And another psychophant was enjoying his place in the palace called Haman. I'm establishing what you're about to pray now. And the Bible says, one night... When Haman was already plotting that by the morrow he was going to execute this Mordecai of a man and the Jews, the Bible says that same night the king could not sleep. And the king said, bring me the chronicles. And they opened and he saw where Mordecai helped him and was not rewarded. And he said, what has been done to this man? And those who serve in the inner chamber said nothing. He said, who is there? And he called the arch enemy of God, Mordecai, and the Jews. He said, what should be done to such a man? He thought it was him. So out of his greed, he suggested superior suggestions. He said, let none fail. Do this to Mordecai. I'm saying this because many of you here have participated in the rising of many, politically, spiritually, economically, but then it looks like you have been forgotten. Joseph helped the wine presser to interpret his dreams and plead.
only then that when he was restored back to the king he should advocate his innocence the man forgot and for two years he added joseph's pain but when the night came it always happens in the night the king had a dream you're about to pray father i have served you sincerely i open up for my rewards everybody who has been assigned to reward you to bless you for your times of prayer for your times of fasting for your times of service i'd like you to pray that the book of remembrance be open for you tonight is someone praying let the book of remembrance that which archives the services of men let it be opened in heaven for my sake for the sake of my family someone is praying for the sake of my husband for the sake of my wife for the sake of my children service hallelujah hallelujah please lend me one more minute let me plead with you there was a man in the bible called hezekiah in chapter 38 of isaiah the bible says he was a king and a genuine prophet isaiah came to him said you are sick put your house in order i have heard from god you will not survive the bible says hezekiah turned his face to the wall and said lord remember this is not how you are somebody is about to pray god remember when you say remember it's not because he has forgotten i'd like you to open up and pray lord remember remember in the name of jesus remember your mercy remember my service remember the prayer of my wife remember the prayer of my children remember my seed you said it will speak for me in the days of adversity lord remember remember you are a covenant keeping god remember you said righteousness has rewards you said godliness has rewards here on earth and in the world after remember remember my sacrifices in your house remember my participation remember my honor for my pastor remember my commitment to spiritual things remember my integrity oh god hallelujah hallelujah your love for god your passion for God, your faithfulness, and the purity of your works are weapons. They can become systems of defense for you, even in an evil time. That when the devil comes, you can lift up your service as a weapon and say, how dare you touch me? Lord, if I die, who will give during the next year's conference? Hallelujah. There is someone in this place right now you are saying, Apostle, even though our time is up, while hearing you speak, I would say I've defaulted in the place of faithfulness because I have not opened up my heart to Jesus sincerely. Can I tell you the truth? Please hear me. It is important that we take advantage of this gift of eternal life that has come from Jesus. Many times we talk about this is beyond the church thing. It is his desire and his will that all men be saved. Perhaps there's someone here tonight, you are up the balcony, or you are, you know, down here, or you are following online, maybe by way of television or the internet, or even watching by way of a rebroadcast. And you are saying, Apostle, while I heard you speak, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me through your words. I need Jesus. I'm only looking for one person tonight who will be bold enough to say I'm not ashamed. I want to make it right with Jesus. And for someone, you are saying, Apostle, I have truly handed my life to Jesus, but as it is, things have gone haywire. I need to start afresh. May I please request, I'm working on borrowed time, for the next 10 or 15 seconds, I want you to boldly come and stand right here. Don't wait for anyone to be the first. You are convinced in your heart that you need Jesus. Win that war. Come and stand here right now. I will count one, two, three and I'll begin my prayer. One, let's appreciate them as, we, as they come.
Come. Come. Sabo Rai Kabani Nina Go Cheto Kabani Nago Nago Come. Come to Jesus. Listen to me. Let me tell you sincerely, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. But if the trumpet sounds right now and your ways are not right with the Lord, as much as God loves you, he's bound to his word. The Bible says books were opened and another book was opened. And whosoever's name was not found in that book, he was cast into the lake of fire. That this is the second death. I want to appreciate you for coming, ladies and gentlemen, young and old alike. And for those who are connecting by way of television, as I pray with this once, I want you to connect. Pray it from the depth of your heart. Here at Foursquare Sokoro, we are praying. And the rewarder has come to honor your faith. You have believed that he exists. And you have come to hand everything to him. He said, but I know whom I believe. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him. Even against that day. May I please request all of you who have come to the front here to lift your right hand as a sign of surrender. You are doing it unto Jesus. Please say after me from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I declare tonight that you are my Savior. I declare that you are my Lord. And I declare that you are my King. I declare from tonight that eternal life is mine. I receive it into my spirit. And I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, and of the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name we pray someone direct me do they return back to, okay okay so here's what will happen may i please request ladies and gentlemen you follow the counselors they are waving their hands they will just have a word with you where are they going which direction okay so this way let's celebrate them as they go please give them a big 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 god bless you give them a big god bless you thank you so very much is that the best you can do for square In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I stand upon the grace of Reverend, your man of God, and the angel over this house. I stand upon the grace of the eldership and the pastorate. And let me speak over your life. That in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, everything that represents reproach in your Christian experience, that while you have given all to serve God, some things have not yet been in place. Tonight, I declare upon you by the power of of the apostolic and the prophetic let things begin to change now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray over everyone who is sick in your body plagued by a terminal disease a recurrent health issue in the name that is above all names healing surges through your body now I pray for someone who is trusting God for a job between now and the end of the year, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, may my God surprise you. Four square Asoko right declare that between now and the end of the year, you will not bury anybody in this church. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you are blessed. I declare that you are lifted. I pray for your passion and hunger for spiritual things. It will not dwindle with the ember months. Rather, it will, it will go from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I pray that every blessing that has been commanded to rest in this conference, beginning from when it started even to the end, I lend my faith and my voice with every 
one who will be ministering here in word, in songs, to declare that you will be maximally blessed. For in Jesus' name we pray. One more time, thank you so very much and may the Lord bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and look at the face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.